YouTube world, I am back. This is a 50 by 120 centimeters canvas. Didn't realize it was the same size as my table. Um, <laughs> so I've really had to work hard at getting the right kind of camera angle, which will change throughout this video. Now, the only way to control paint on a large canvas, I'm doing a seascape by the way, is to really do it in stages. The temperatures in the UK are way too hot at the moment to paint. I've already attempted this during the day and I had to scrape it because the paint was just getting thicker and thicker and thicker, literally by the minute. And I couldn't manipulate it, I couldn't do anything with it. So I had to take it into the garden, I had to hose it down get up really really early in the morning and um, this is what I'm doing now. So I've put a white background there of um, house paint. Oh before I do that let's talk about my colours. I've got titanium white, satin enamel for the clouds and the base of cerulean blue. Now if you've watched me before you will know I desaturate my colours with complementary colour and get various shades to kind of get the, the, the colours that I want. You don't always get the colours that I want from straight out of the tube, but not for a sky. And um, very often they're very saturated and, and just too bright. So, um, yeah, base is down and I'm just going to do a puddle pour. And my f consistency is really thin, actually not just because of the heat but because if you want satin enamel to work really you, your paint can't be too thick because you won't get any reactions at all so towards the bottom of the horizon line and look i thought i'd just drag my palette knife through look at the lovely effects of dragging the um the pale blue over the satin enamels and the house paint beautiful but you know that's all very well and it all looks really nice but at the end of the day you still have to tilt you can't leave all that paint on the canvas um so i'm just just having a bit of fun here for five minutes but it's a good way of mixing the paint up actually um and i wanted a dramatic sky well i think i certainly got a dramatic sky so I'm just going to speed up here and um, interject every now and then with some wise words.
I do love a bit of Vivaldi. Um, now I really did, uh, as always, fiddle and fiddle and fiddle. I, I, I never know when to stop and I, I never quite accept what the paint gives me first hand. And I don't see why you should if you don't like it. Uh, you just have to keep manipulating it to a point that you know you're happy. So I did get it to a point where I could, I could, I quite liked it actually. It wasn't what I had in my head. I think I say this um, later on, but when is it ever? When is it ever really? Okay. <laughs> Um, still a little bit more complicated than what I thought, but let's just see what happens. Let it do its thing. It's I really like this bit down here. Beautiful clouds happening. So the satin enamel really did its its job, and I'll just because I've just been working on this bit up here. Just see how it develops. So it'd be my job to. Um, although the painting's in three halves, three three sections you don't want to end up with three separate paintings so it'd be my job to really make this the sea work with this sky and that's what i need to go away and think about see you soon okay guys i'm back i've had to change the angle of the camera um which isn't ideal for youtube but i i this, this canvas is exactly the same size as my pouring table. And I want you to see um, what I'm doing down here, but I can't move the canvas up, otherwise it won't be level. So bear with me. So the sky is dry. I only did it yesterday, it's so hot. Um, so the, the, the complexity of the sky has kind of made me rethink down here um, and, and the sea and the sand to perhaps be a little bit more simpler but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the horizon again on the other side and I'm going to pour the sand first and I've got colours here so the basis for these colours is Naples yellow apart from the gold and the gold is just a mixture of all different golds so I don't know how that's going to react and I've desaturated the Naples yellow by adding its opposite colour in the colour wheel, a little tiny bit. So I've added some kind of like blue violet, just, just a tiny bit. And this is a lighter version. So hopefully it won't be too complex. And we'll see how that goes. And this is going to be a flip cup. Um, I'm debating whether to put some foreground detail in and swipe in with a little bit of silicone, um, just with a little bit of black. But we'll see. We'll see.
actually quite pleased with this. I'm glad I put some foreground detail in. Um, I forgot that when you talk silicone, it kind of goes a bit mad. But we'll see how that develops and just some here in the distance. So in the foreground, it's more dominant and in the distance, it's thinner and smaller. So now I'm going to be working on the sea. Around that. I've got some blues all left over from various things and um, I'm, I'm going to go and leave this now for a good hot, but maybe 20 minutes because it's so warm. We'll see. Right, I just wanted to show you uh, the colours I've got for my C. Now, whenever I ever have a workshop, I just put all the leftover colours in little tubs. And sometimes those colours get mixed up. Um, so I, I, can't, I can't tell you what is exactly in these colours. But what I know I have done is I know that these, this end here is a, uh, a basis of indigo, okay, for my horizon line, which is in the distance. And I have desaturated those um, with a little bit of sanguine. So it's a little bit of orangey paint and silver. So I've ended up with <sighs> beautiful kind of dull indigo blue that's a little bit silvery. Now, I know that I am mixing different paint densities and I am mixing um, different pigments together to get the colours that I want, but I am more interested in having the correct depth of colour than I am effects created by fluid art. I wanted effects in the sky. I limited the effects down here with the yellows that I've been using and obviously the silicone. But here, I, I, I don't really want lots of cells popping up. Having said that, sometimes I get them. But generally speaking, um, I will swipe them out anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is, it's only been about 15 minutes and I still don't want to pick this up and tilt it again. So I'm going to leave it for a lot longer. I'm going to away, go away and have a cup of tea and wash my hands. And uh, come back in a good, I would say, oh, good half hour. So I reckon this is over an hour. Um, because I came back to do the painting and didn't realise that I had left quite a lot of yellow on canvas and even picking up picking it up after an hour I wouldn't really expect to see paint move and I did so I had to wait a little bit longer and then you run the risk of the paint actually you know really drying um, and and you can see me picking loads of gunk out of the paint continually actually because what was happening is the paint was drying around the sides of the cup and as you mixed it it was then falling back in the cup and um, it wasn't ideal and it was getting later and later on in the day and I was, I was panicking thinking that I really don't want to be in the same position as I was the other day when I was trying to do the sky. So I pulled my colours there, you can see the um, desaturated colours are in the distance and I hope that might need a little bit of work afterwards with a brush but I'm just swiping now and doing the balloon rolls. And I always feel a little bit hesitant doing balloon rolls. They're not, they're not that easy. And it's really difficult to know when to stop. But you're, you're better off waiting till your paint goes a little bit off before you attempt a balloon roll because you'll get long streaks all over your painting and that's what you, you really don't want. Uh, so I fiddle for a while. And I know I'm going to be working on this painting with a brush afterwards, not a great deal, but I have a few ideas just to, just to really make the surf stand out. Back with the dried results.
soon. Before I show you the complete painting in all its glory, it's it was dried the same day. That's how hot it is here at the moment. Um, you can see I've had an accident here where I had the masking tape and I think it was the uh, base coat for the water is, is bled underneath the masking tape. I think it might be a happy accident because I live not far from a coastline called the Jurassic Coast and there is a view from the beach of Old Harry Rocks. I'll show you what it looks like here. So I'm just going to be working on creating some waves here and I'm going to think about putting Old Harry Rocks just to cover this here but we'll see. Quick time lapse. this for now. I'm going to look at it for a couple of days and I might come back and do a little bit more tweaking. So to the bottom here I've just added um, some grass but that quite, worked out quite well swiping the silicone down that quite pleased. You've got a flash of gold going right through the sand and then the balloon rolls and the sea in the distance. And old Harry, there he is in the cliffs of Studland. Oh, I'm really pleased I did that. I wasn't sure whether I was, I was going to do it, but I'm really pleased that I did. And then the sky is kind of epic. Maybe if I was to have a criticism about this piece, I wish that sky was horizontal, not going up at an angle. But there you go. Thank you for watching. <laughs>